sitting down. That's it. Oh, yeah. It's not fall off. We're about to get serious, okay? I'm sitting down. I've got my notes with me. I'm not wearing any makeup for the purpose of this video because I want you guys to have a look right here and see my current texture, the complexion, and my scarring at the moment. If you can see any, I should have one right here because um, I went kind of crazy and just decided to like dig my head. Never do that, by the way. Acne has to be one of the most annoying things to deal with ever. Whether you're male, female, whatever age it is, acne is one of those things where it just doesn't judge you, like it will find you and it will stay. But a lot of people say that acne is maybe incurable, it will keep coming, it will keep going. I think what it is is people haven't found something that works so you keep switching different things and going back and forth. So I'm going to tell you my whole journey because I think at some point you might jump in and go oh that sounds like me, oh you yeah, know I went through that as well and then what I used at that time to get rid of it at that point or what I dealt with may help you. So first and foremost I first ever noticed this acne flare up as I guess a rash. I was working a job from 8 to 6, there's a lot of different factors, maybe environmental, I was very stressed out and um, yeah, it was not pleasant. I've always dealt with a spot here, a spot there, or a spot here. I've never dealt with just rashes from like ear to here, just co completely covering my cheek. Um, I'll insert a picture, you should be able to see it. It was not nice at all. I sort of went crazy doing what you would with the little spot popper, trying to extract all of the kind of like spots on my face. Um, and that left me with some very terrible, terrible scarring. So I looked up how to kind of deal with scars or what kind of beauty clinics that I can go to for them to give me maybe like a face mask or some kind of treatment. And I stumbled upon the world of microdermabrasion. And yeah, um, I'm not gonna say that was a good choice. Um, only because obviously, if you have active acne, what is the microdermabrasion going to do for you, you know? But if you're new to microdermabrasion, all it basically is is a small vacuum that they use against your skin and it kind of like buffs away, like scratches away with these little um, crystals. It takes away the first layer of your skin, so you're kind of left with this new baby vulnerable skin um, that's supposed to encourage healthy kind of new cell generation. The reason it helps with pigmentation is because a lot of it is just dead skin, so it did help. Um, improved the texture of my skin because then I couldn't see the actual rashes it was kind of just healing from it but it did look a lot worse in terms of it being swollen and didn't actually do much so that was the first kind of thing I tried to do as time passed it progressed into sort of like cystic acne where I could feel it under my skin and it was really really hurting me um, it was starting to make me not want to go to shoots I think I was missing out on bookings and things like that because of how bad my skin was getting um, I didn't want to look in people's face, it was starting to get really like horrible for me. So I decided to go to the doctors, I really really had enough and I told him everything that was going on. Because my dietary was like only at fish, maybe it could be something to do with my digestion, I don't know but he gave me an 8 week course of Lymechylin? Lymechylin? I don't know, I'm going to insert it here, there's a lot of things I can't pronounce on this list. Okay. And he recommended that. It was an eight week course of tablets, um, taking it twice a day. He also gave me Juac Gel, which is the benzoyl peroxide. I got 5%, I believe. It also has some chemicals in there. I will list here that I can't seem to pronounce as well. Um, now, that eight week course of tablets, taking it twice a day, the Juac Gel, and I also used it in combination with a face wash that I picked up from Clinique. It was their anti-blemish solution. So I would wash my face in the morning, obviously take my tablet and then I would use the cream as a moisturiser and then in the night time I was using the direct gel on my face only because I think at that time as well I was still trying to cover a lot of the acne with makeup and that is one another thing that I would say to you, um, it's difficult I know but when you're putting the makeup on the face you're actually just, you're kind of it's just like a stagnant process, it's not really, your skin's not getting any better and all you're doing is any active kind of blemishes that you've got or if you've been picking away or you have kind of any open wounds, it just looks really crusty underneath the makeup and I was starting to learn that and unfortunately it was a small period of time that I was still trying to do it and then I finally got to a point where that's enough now. I can't hide it anymore, it's horrible, just forget it, whatever. And I started to em embrace the fact that, you know what, I am actively trying to do something. I'm healing right now, I'm using the right creams, I'm using the right um, tablets and everything. Let's just see how it goes. So, obviously, like I said, it was an eight-week course. I 
I believe I got to about six or seven weeks when I really just decided like this is tedious. I'm not seeing any improvement whatsoever. Um, I absolutely hate my skin. I look at the mirror and I hate myself. I don't want to look in people's faces. You know, I was in the gym with my hat and my hoodie on my head. I mean, I kind of do that anyway, but I really, I couldn't look in people's face and everything. I told my mom how I feel and everything and she was kind of talking me through it. And I remember getting to my last two tablets. I took them and I felt like, wow, what a waste of eight weeks that was kind of thing. And um, I believe it was the next morning, I remember looking in the mirror and I think I went to go and feel my skin. I couldn't feel anything underneath, like there was nothing coming through because there was times where it felt like I had good days and then I also had bad days where the skin looked clear but if I went to go and touch my face while I was washing it I could feel the new ones about to come up and I felt like there's no escape from this, I'm always dealing with this acne, like how am I ever going to cure this? And it was very depressing, really really depressing and it definitely lowered my self confidence. Those last two tablets, it was the following morning, I went to wash my face, I couldn't feel a thing under my skin and I felt like, could this be it, you know, like, oh my goodness. So I continued kind of using it, I ran out of the tablets but I was still using my Durac gel in the night times and yeah, I mean, about a week passed and stuff and I felt fine, about a month passed and I felt like, you know what, I need to now start dealing with the scarring. So I did some research into really kind of natural things to help with scarring and hyperpigmentation because I didn't want to go down the microdermabrasion route again, I didn't want to do that, plus it was pricey. Um, and I stumbled upon the black soap, um, the one by Shea Moisture. I am absolutely in love with the whole of the black soap um, problem skin line that Shea Moisture do, it is amazing. The black soap, the toner and the moisturiser is literally the biggest game changer for me. That and I also use uh, Bobbi Brown's intensive skin supplement at the moment. I said no, I say at the moment, I've been using that for like the last two years now. During the time that I was wearing makeup with acne, I was using Bobbi Brown's cleansing oil. Absolutely amazing oil, by the way, if you are still wearing makeup, regardless if you're dealing with terrible acne or small blemishes or whatever. It's really, really good because you're able to kind of loosen the makeup on your face and any other dirt. Then you would wet your hands slightly and it then emulsifies the makeup on your face. You wash it. There's scrubs that I've used. I recommend St. Ives Apricot Scrub, Blemish Control. I've been using that super amazing i really really love it but when i was using makeup if i was just to stop there at that scrub i know there was still sort of makeup in my skin like deep in my pores so when i used this for the first time just to see i went to go and wash my face after um emulsifying it with the cleansing oil and there was the makeup was coming off so i was like wow it really does get deep in there so this really there's another key thing that kind of helped me break down any hyperpigmentation um, and dead skin, things like that. This is massive, I highly recommend it. So once I've kind of done that, rinse it off and then I would set everything back, you know, pH balance and everything with the problem skin toner. Once I finish using the toner, I then use the um, intensive skin supplement. I used to use it every single day. I don't find I need it as much because one thing I noticed, and especially after using the medication, it definitely dried out my skin. Um, so I needed as much kind of moisturizing products as I could get. And using a serum as a base before you apply your cream is when you go outside, you've got all these kind of environmental damages, all these other things that might kind of attack your skin when you go outside. So it's nice to have like a first layer and then you've got your face cream on there. So it's like very, very, very much protected. On the days that I'm just kind of in the house and lounging around, not gonna wear any makeup, I will use my Problem Skin Moisturizer. Um, it's got tamarind extract and tea tree oil. And it says here for clear and balanced blemished oily skin. So for me, I absolutely love it. It has helped me so much with my hyperpigmentation. It does leave you with a very kind of matte uh, finish, which is why I'll use it just as an everyday moisturizer. But when I am, I know I'm about to put makeup on, I will use the Bobbi Brown face base. It's got vitamin E and shea butter as a base. And it literally smells so nice. It's kind of like a sweet citrusy smell. If you don't like citrusy smells, then this obviously will not be for you. But I highly recommend this because it's a really, really nice finish. Very, very moisturized and supple kind of feeling skin. And then it's just perfect base for makeup that you're gonna put on afterwards. Also, fresh aloe vera works amazing for your skin. There's also a, I think it's Dr. I'll find it and insert it here. 
the aloe vera gel um, as a tone up, which is a really good way to kind of set the pH balance back once you finish washing your face as well. I highly recommend it. Other tips would be make sure you change your pillowcase at least once a week. I kept my makeup brushes super clean and my bag that it came in, I like disinfected literally everything inside that bag completely. Don't touch your face. Try and literally limit if not at all, just don't touch your face and don't let other people touch your face. Definitely, you don't know what oil or bacteria that they're carrying, you don't know what oil you're carrying on your fingers. Refrain from touching your face, do not pick your scars, do not pick anything on your face, leave it alone, seriously. Your phone as well. Because your phone is like, it's, you know, it's a surface, it can attract a lot of dirt and bacteria, also you don't know if you've placed it on its face at any point and then when you place it on your face, you've kind of got all the dirt, oil and bacteria from wherever. Um, and whoever may have been touching your phone as well and you put it on your skin it's just not it's not on don't put your phone on your face like now I'll have everybody on loudspeaker or I'll have my earphones in my ear but at no times will you see my phone attached to my face if you have active um, spots that you want to get rid of I would suggest you get a spot um, popper extractor thing uh, because when you are scratching away at your skin and also when you're trying to pop away at the skin you might be pushing it uh, further into your skin and that makes it a lot worse uh, when you use the extractor it will kind of limit where it is that you're popping from so it kind of just pops out the dirt and then I'll suggest that you tone your face afterwards and then set it with the serum and then your cream and then that's what kind of like protects it make sure that your skin's not damaged and then you don't get scarring yes I've worked out the formula for limiting your blemish scars I'm a genius thank me later I promise you you will I promise you oh my goodness how could I almost forget wow the biggest factor dairy I cut out dairy dairy just seems to be bad all around um, I do not drink milk I'm really limiting my cheese <laughs> I'm a sucker for cheese man <laughs> and especially if it's mac and cheese oh man my mum she makes a damn good mac and cheese but if you can cut out dairy completely it's not even just help with my skin but overall as well health wise even my um, menstrual cramps are completely like they've just gone so I noticed that when I cut out the dairy and really really cut it out like not even cheese anything it was kind of like more of a vegan style of diet I had no cramps whatsoever there's something about the hormones in milk um, and especially as a woman I believe it's not it doesn't react well you put in more home hormones into your body your body's reacting could be the estrogen as well um, there's a lot of things I mean milk in general has a lot of bacteria a lot of pus in it um, that all adds up I mean just cut out the dairy honestly you'll notice a difference within a month it's just it, it's very very drastic what milk does to you that is literally my whole journey in a video and I'm very proud to say that I have not had any acne flare-ups in over a year when I started using the black soap my actual pigmentation hyperpigmentation sorry was completely fading within the first three months of using it I was already noticing a massive difference so I am praying for you guys out there to stay strong um, I know it sucks acne is just not it's not even a laughing matter to stay strong when you are going through the process of the healing that's a time that you're really gonna have to embrace because putting the makeup over that and everything is um, it's so much worse for you and I know you feel like you might be hiding the scarring or the you know the scabbing and everything but it's not helping at all and I had to go through that period of time where mentally I said you know what screw it no more makeup I'm healing and I'm gonna embrace this healing hey man I'm having a bit of a skin issue thing at the moment so I'm not gonna just like directly look at you guys but um, okay, the light is not so great in here but that's all good because the skin isn't looking too great right now um, and I'm under some healing process so it's just doing this thing I'm just having to leave it Yes, we are now finally on our way. I'm using Waze so I can get there nice and quick, no traffic. <laughs> Shout out to the plug. And now here I am, I'm able to kind of just be on camera with you. I don't have any makeup on. Yes! Like screw makeup, I can just have my face out now. And if I have any kind of like spot or something that pops up now, I'm like, nah, it's nothing compared to what I dealt with before. Like this is nothing, I'm fine. Like thank you Jesus that I found this solution. and. I rebuke acne from your life in Jesus name okay we're gonna we're gonna do this and in fact I'm so confident that this little list of things that I've written out for you is gonna work I want you to come back to this video and tell me how it's been going for you whether it be in a year's time six months three months let me know how it's going for you and take care guys see you in my next video Bye.